Hello friends, a very good day to all of you out there and a very, very warm welcome from the entire team of Harry Fit Theatres. So good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining in. Is my voice audible and clear to all of you out there? Hello Pooja, so good to see you. Hi Fariha, thank you very much for joining in. Warm welcome to all of you. I am so grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so we are here today to have the discussion on MRC Pair OSCE. I'm glad that uh, you guys have been amazing students and I'm really happy that you people have been doing great. Now with all this uh, preparation, which we had been doing daily tasks, we are going to start up today with the discussion, a fresh start of MRCPI OSCE we are going to take just in a moment. And we will see that how the things are, where we are in the preparation, what do we need to do and how we have to make it a success together. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead. I'm going to meet you guys. Just give me one second. Thank you very much, Tahani. So good to see you guys as well. Thank you very much, Maria. So just 30 seconds. There are people in the waiting room. We are going to accept them. And then we are going to take a fresh start for this OSCE preparation. Thank you very much. All right, okay, so here we begin. And thank you so much. Am I audible to everybody? And am I visible to everybody? Okay, great, thank you so much, thank you. Can I see the chat? Hello, great, Samra, thank you very much. The more voice is okay, everyone? <clears throat> the volume is okay? Everyone, the voice is audible to you guys? Thank you very much, Nada. Thank you very much, Fariha. Thank you so much. Warm back in. All right, guys. So, um, MRCP Oski, you people have been waiting, and lots of people they ask this question: the ma'am, how much time is enough? You guys have this stress and anxiety that would we be able to take the exam till February 2025? The answer is yes, you all can take this exam. Um, the ones who have taken the written, the ones who have just had in September or March 2024, they've had their written exam. They're very, very well prepared because the theory part is almost fresh and we just need to devise the communication skills. We just need to devise the content which we need for the speaking part and rest of the job is easy for you guys. Now, with regards to the preparation today, I would tell you that what is needed I would talk to you guys regarding the aspect of passing technique and what makes us underconfident in exam, what is needed to be a good candidate, a passing candidate. Because of the November exam, the, the students, they had thorough preparation, but few of you didn't get seat and you are in the February exam. Just to announce that February exam is an overseas exam we are not having in Ireland. This is an exam only that is being held in Oman. It had been a wonderful center. Oman had wonderful results last time. I always say that, um, yes, it does matter, like the examiners, the centers. But at the end of the day, if you are a passing candidate, no matter you're in Ireland, no matter you're in Oman, no matter you're in Dubai, no matter you're in Riyadh, anywhere you're preparing for the exam, you are a successful candidate. Why? Because your, your attire, your confidence says it all to the examiner. I hope you all would agree to this. How much time is enough from starting from today? If you people take a fresh start, definitely yes, we can make it a success. Just to give you that booster that you all can be successful like your colleagues, like your seniors, like your juniors who had been with RFA, making a very strong alumni. I can give you my words that if you give from this day onwards a thorough preparation, the result would be yours. 
and you would be part of the champions. We are waiting for the November results, of course, but tribute to the May 2024 champions, just to get encouraged that yes, we all have to be in the champion list in February 2025 exam. Thank you so much. I'm sure that you would be one of them in February 2025. And I'm sure with this preparation, you all would ace and there will be a time when we would be in this champion list. And ma'am taking the introduction for May 2025 will be showing you guys to your juniors, to your colleagues that see, there was a time when we started off. There was a time when we began as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Noor. Thank you, Pooja. With this aim, with this enthusiasm, I am going to take all the sessions of MRC Bayoski myself. All the sessions of the regular, the fast track are going to be by me with a set of moderators just to coach you guys from the baby steps. And we are going to have a tiny glimpse of a session that how do we do today so that you guys get an idea that what is expected, right? Now, the journey towards success, the first step when we are aiming for any exam, that's always the exam pattern. That's always what is needed out of that exam to understand that what is the exam exam like? What does it contain? When we talk about the MRCPI OSCE, it is one of those exams which can be taken very closely with your written preparation. I have my reasons for that, and I'm going to justify that in front of you guys so that you guys exactly understand that what is needed out of this preparation. We had wonderful exam experience. Um, it was MRC Peoski in Dubai and in Ireland. 9th of November in Ireland, the exam was taken, and 9th and 10th of November in Dubai. I took a wonderful OSCE course. It was in 2nd of November in Ireland, and it was on 6th and 7th of November in Dubai. And all the students with the full enthusiasm, they have appeared. We're just waiting and praying for the results. May the blessings be with us. Now is the time for the next example, which you have been waiting, that how we have to start the preparation the ones who didn't get seat in November, they have higher chance that they would be on priority for the Oman exam. And the ones who are the first timers, this is an overseas. So the chances of getting seat are definitely higher. I repeat once again, we are not having exam in February for the Ireland diet. The Ireland is going to be May 2025 and the dates are awaited for the same. If you see here, we are still waiting for the dates for um, 2025 May. However, the February dates have been announced and it is 21st and 22nd of February, year 2025. I'm going to see you guys. Many of you are already in the Oman group. The ones who have not reserved their seats, I will be there 16th, 17th, 18th. We would be there practicing all hands-on and the last polishing in Oman for the practice of this OSCE. All right. I can see many registrations already in the Uman group. 
So make sure that you do your active res reservations earlier because active seats are always less. However, the listeners can join even at the last moment as well. But this is an OSCE exam that demands speaking, that demands a confident attire, that demands um, correcting yourself that how you are when it comes to the stress of exam. So active seats are definitely suggested. The more you speak, the better you would be. All right. Okay. Now, coming to the point, what is MRCPI OSCE all about? Wanted to tell you guys that what is the uh, exam pattern? Because when we will understand the exam pattern, then only we would understand that how the preparation is needed, what is the direction of the preparation in which we would be getting more score and the chances of passing the exam is higher, right? Um, we have two sets of portions of the exam in the OSCE. We are having the clinicals, the long case, and we are having the students who actually know what is the circuit all about. Again, I have a few students in the waiting room. Just give me a second, guys. All right, the voice is okay. The voice is audible to you guys. So we were talking about the paper pattern. Thank you very much, Amana, Samra. Yes, visible and audible to you guys. Give me a thumbs up in the chat box, please. Am I audible? Am I visible to you guys? Thank you very much, Samra, my dear. All right, so we were talking about, thank you, my dearest Maria. We were talking about the exam pattern. We have a long case and we have the circuit. Now, hello, Farah, my dear. Thank you very much. Beautiful ears, Sabah Khalid, for this beautiful voice, yes? Okay, so we have one long case and we have a circuit. Now, you guys need to understand, please, when we talk about the long case, the long case is only one by each student, right? For example, you are a candidate, you're joining in the morning and you're standing in the queue, you are in batch A. Every time before you reach for your exam, you know what is your circuit, what is your batch. They would tell you that you have to reach for the registration 8.30 a.m., you are in batch A. They would tell the other students, for example, you're in batch B and then you're C. According to how many registrations for exams are there, they're going to set you in different batches, okay? With regards to these batches, you should be knowing about that in the morning, you have a long case. If you're having a long case, you will start up with, for example, candidate number one, two, three. One is going to gynae, two is going to orbs, three is going to gynae, four is going to orbs, five is going to gynae, six is going to orbs. So you do not know you're getting gynac or you're getting obstatics. However, you know that which circuit or which group you are in, and then accordingly, you have your distribution of long cases. Either you will get obstatics or you will get gynac for exam, and for which we are going to prepare you guys thoroughly that what is needed. What are the tips to pass the obstatics? What are the tips to pass gynac? Both are almost 10 to 15 station, uh, long cases, which I give in the end. But thoroughly, if you do the regular and the fast track long cases, nothing would be outside this. Possibly the most important cases they come up in exam, very expected cases come up in exam. It's only that we have to be confident and we shouldn't be nervous, all right? Now, long case is one, as I've mentioned. It is going to be a 25 minutes long case. Please understand the, the situation you are going to be the candidate. There are going to be two examiners. You enter into the cubicle, you sit here, you greet the examiner, you have instructions on the table in front of you. You've got a role player here and there's going to be an examination couch here 
with the mannequin, please. No actual patient is there. Are you guys understanding that, please? Are you guys understanding that, please? After COVID 2019, all mannequins are there or models are there. We do not have actual patients to pick up the examination findings. However, fewer times we do have the, the mannequins which have findings, which I definitely show to you guys at times, the tennis ball or the lemon size, the watermelon size. They put in certain balls to put the cyst. They can put in fibroid with multiple small ping pong balls. So they are going to give the um, closed feelings. However, there are chances that you don't have any findings and they will give you findings. Basically, the technique has to be perfect for examination, all right? When we start up, so the first examiner is going to assess you for your history, for your examination, and more or less with the investigations as well, right? But the second examiner after investigations, your whole management plan with your diagnosis is going to be the viva according to the topic is going to be by the second examiner. Do you guys get what I mean? All of you, did you guys understand that? Yeah. So this is the long case pattern and you have 25 minutes for the same. I need interaction in the chat box, please. So the recording would be uploaded. We are live as well, so not a problem. You people can repeat it as many times and I'm here, the moderators are here. All the team is here to address uh, your queries and answers for your questions, okay? Very good, Fariha. So 25 minutes, Farah. Farah, my love, 25 minutes for whole long case, right? Everything. I do division for my students so that they're accurate in time management. For example, I tell them that divide this into para like puja 12.5, 12.5, right? I tell them to divide their time so they're accurate. If you're not accurate in your time management, the examiner also does a prompt. You know, examiner starts doing a prompt because they know that they have to complete whole exam list which they have to assess you upon. If you divide 12.5 and 12.5, out of here, around seven minutes is okay for the history. And eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, around 5.5 minutes for performing examination and then getting the findings of the examination after getting back on your seat. Because the examination findings, when you get, you come to know that, okay, what do you have to do further for that case, right? You give investigations, right? You ask for the investigations and then you make your management plan. That is with the next examiner. So from day one, when I will start the live sessions, I will make your demarcation of time and division of time so that you guys do not miss out. And the content is very clear. Time oriented preparation has to be there. It's not that you're taking history forever. It's not that you're taking 10 minutes for history because then definitely the other content would get affected. Remember, we don't have a second long case to compensate our first long case, right Farah? We have only one long case and unfortunately there is no compensation for the circuit from the long case or for the long case from the circuit. So many times students, they say, Farheen, that ma'am, I did amazing in circuit. However, I missed, I missed the long case by a few percentages. This is, this is true because if you're failing in your long case, no matter you're 90% in your circuit, the exam is failing. Similarly, you're 90% in your long case and you're failing in your circuit, the exam is failing. Do you guys get what I mean? All of you, do you guys get what I mean? So long case has to be passed and we have only one long case. We would work on every aspect of the long case. And I always say, if your history is perfect, if your examination is perfect, if you know how to ask for the investigations and justify those investigations, if you know that you have reached to the correct diagnosis, and if you know that what to do the management for a safe obstetrics or a safe gynec plan, nobody can fail you. Every section start working on that. Make yourself perfect in history. 
amazing steps and confident attire in examination. Know what investigation is needed and then ask for it with justification. What do you want to see in your patient? And then make a good diagnosis and then make a perfect management, evidence-based management plan, right? If you follow your long cases like this, I would train you in this. I would coach you according to that. You would be fine. There would not be any problem at all. Maria says, how much weightage of long case marks wise? Maria, the whole long case key is like history, examination, investigation, making the right diagnosis, and then treating with a safe plan, which is according to the recommendations. The job is done. Every section you have to pass, right? This is how the long case gets passed, right? Saba says both are mandatory to pass. Unfortunately, yes, right? Saba, we have no choice at all. Both have to be passed separately to pass this exam. It is a small exam. As compared to MRCOG, it is a small exam, guys. It is not an exhaustive exam. Only one long case you have to do in the entire day. So you don't have that, you know, um, tired feeling. You're not fatigued in the exam. It's only that we need to understand what is required from us, right? Long case, we have very perfect lots of practice. Absolutely, Pooja. You've got a wonderful ebook. You've got wonderful practice stations with me. You would understand and you'll be master if you just follow the basis, the way I take history, the way I approach examination, the way I justify the investigation. Do not ask the investigations which are not needed. That reduces your score. And do not miss those investigations which are needed. That also miss, tends to miss your score, right? I am so grateful, Sabah. We would not only pass Sabah Khaled, we would aim for highest score like written exam. Yes, we would aim for 80% and above from today. And I'm sure that with togetherness, we would make it a success. Thank you. Farah has a question. In live active mock, we will practice this all. Absolutely. You know, if you go to the highlights of Dubai mock, we did 32 long cases. 32 long cases. Every single student did their own long case. And the next day I did all the HOPIs of important long cases myself, just to make sure that your history, perfect revision is there, right? I'm, I'm doing the same in Oman, already told the team for booking. You people have already decided the, the dates in the Oman group. You people have given me the dates. So according to your ease, when you are reaching up, I would be there, we would be doing final revision, just hands-on and practicing this. All right, from Oman. Yes, absolutely, Pooja. If you check, I gave five long cases in the end. And my third case came on day one and my first case came on day two. So, you know, seeing the pattern, we tend to know that what's coming up. All the expected cases, which I gave them shortlisted that this is the expectation, please and solved PDF with those keys that would be with you guys, which I want in the last one week with you guys, right? Okay, now, absolutely, we would do that. So we do one long case and we listen to the other as well because it's 25 minutes, complete long case pattern, all right? Okay, thank you very much. Now, all of you, please pay an attention here. Once you're done with the long case, you would be having at least two to three hours of gap that would be according to your exam scenario. I just want you to be mentally ready. Please pay attention. I would make you understand that how the system is. For example, you are in batch number A, B, C, D, E, any of these batch, okay? Batch number A is the first one to take the long case. You have taken your long case. After that, B will start, C will start, D will start, E will start. So, after having the long case, A goes to rest and they are left for like, they tell them that please come back after two hours, three hours. I start receiving the calls and students, they start contacting in this rest time because they're done with their first part, right? Once E is done, the circuit will start. Again, it would be the same way. A will start with the circuit and their circuit is done. The exam is over. So basically the rest time is similar for everyone because B, C, D, E are doing the long case, A is on rest, then they will go first in the circuit. Similarly, B would go rest after it's over, C, D, E are having the long case, B would be second in the circuit. 
C would be second in the circuit. So basically, the E batch ends the exam in the end. Did you guys understand how it goes? They divide you into groups and no, 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 for not 25 minutes, my dear. Maybe it's more than two, three hours, two and a half hours they give you. Why? Because see, the B students are having the long cases, then C students are having. Every batch has around how much? Around eight students, eight to 10 students. So when they complete, then you are going to have the next one. So around two, two and a half hours break is there in which you're allowed to go to the toilet, you're allowed to have food, you're allowed to have prayers, and then you come back for the second section. Is this clear? Every group has got around eight, eight plus nine, depending upon the cubicles and how many cubicles and examiners they have. According to that, they have their uh, set patching. Clear? Yes, Pooja. The cubicles are the same. For example, Pooja, this is the examination hall, right? You have this examination hall, everyone. I would explain that to you here. All right, this is the examination hall. And they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cubicles, right? A batch started, students started now in the morning. The student one goes there, two goes there, three, four, five, six, seven, eight students are here. They're having their long case in each cubicle. There are two examiners. Got it? There are two examiners. Now, the long kiss is over. They go for rest, right? When you come back, the circuit starts in the same cubicle after the break. And when the circuit starts in the cubicle, you should be knowing that during that circuit, one examiner would be in each circuit. The same cubicles are set there. However, the stations get changed because now the circuit is there. So you might see the examiner whom you had seen in the long case in your circuit as well right? And there is a chance that you might not see because the long cases you have only two examiner, but in the circuit you have around eight examiners. Got it? Did you guys understand? Did you guys understand this point? So the examiners are the same. First, they would be taking the long case and then they would be taking the circuit. Now, every time they can change as well. In Riyadh exam, it was circuit earlier, long case second. But in Dubai exam, long case first and then circuit. Similarly, in Ireland also, long case first, circuit. So every time they can switch over. How you come to know? You get an email around 15 days before exam and they tell you that you are starting with long case. But then everybody starts with long case. All right? Everybody starts with long case. They end the long case, long cases are over. Then from the first batch, they start with the circuit. Farah, understood? Pooja Bhatta, my dear. Samra, understood? Everybody, did you guys understand how the exam dynamics is? Yes? Perfect. We talked about long case. We talked about obstetrics or gynae long case. The second most important part to pass is the circuit stations. What are they? The circuit stations are seven in number with one rest station. Total eight are there. Seven are active stations. Out of them, one is the rest station. Okay, we've got the rest station. Now, thank you, Fareha. You would be better, in fact, best after having the live sessions. So with this, if you guys understand, when we have the rest station, that is going to be 10 minutes break for everyone, right? And we have these seven stations, which we have to do. At these seven stations, please understand, out of these, six are going to be with examiner. What do I mean by that? Structured discussion, right? And one is simulated patient task. Six would be like you have a cubicle. There would be an examiner and it would be you. Absolutely, Farah. Only one simulated patient task in the MRC pair OSCE. So the structured discussion would be your examiner is sitting here, the candidate is sitting here, and they are exchanging their views according to the examiner's question, and you would be giving perfect evidence-based answers. This is 
medical terminology, and we call them structured discussions. Now, how many structured discussions we have in the circuit? All of you, please, just to see that you guys are awake early morning, yeah? How many? We have six structured discussions. Para six structure discussion. Khan, six structure discussion. Saba, six structure discussion. With this, we have another type of a table where you would have your examiner, you would have your role player sitting, and you would come and sit here as a candidate in front of the role player. This would be simulated patient task, I repeat, we do not have an actual patient. It's just the role play in front of us and the candidate talking to that role player. How many SPTs we have? One SPT we have, the simulated patient task. So total six plus one, we have seven stations in the circuit with one rest station and the exam is complete. I took MRCP Oski in the end out of my practical experience. Literally, when you do 14 stations in MRCOG, you're like, oh, you feel dizzy in the last three. It's very exhaustive. This exam has got breaks. It is not exhaustive exam. It doesn't test your stamina. You are easy in the exam. I'm yet to hear in my mentorship experience, anybody saying that, I got tired and I couldn't do my best because, you know, I, I was so tired because back-to-back -back stations. After one long case, you're getting two hours break. And these seven stations, they are not longer stations. You can manage them provided you know what is expected from you. Okay. As compared to other OSCEs, it is comparatively smaller exam. It's not, it's not a long day for you guys, but definitely exam is an exam and we all are stressful. We all have anxiety, but with good preparation, we need to kill that anxiety from today, right? Yes, Maria, it's not. Depending upon other exams, I'm comparing that with European board. I'm comparing that with MRCOG. This is not exhaustive, but understanding the system, what is expected out of you, it's very important, right? That is what is needed. So the circuit can have any sort of, a, any sort of a sequence. Like we have this circuit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, okay? Anyone can be a rest station. For example, Farheen is candidate number one. This is the rest station, okay? This is the rest station. So we don't have anything here. Six is the simulated patient task, right? This is structure discussion. 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 So six structure discussions and one SPT, and there's no sequence. And you don't know what are you starting with, right? So what do I mean to tell you guys? What I mean to tell you guys is that, for example, Farheen is starting as candidate number one. She will be starting with the, from the first one. She will move to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six, six to seven, seven to eight, and job is done. So in between, she would get a rest station as well. She would get SPT in between as well. So her circuit will end up at number eight cubicle. Similarly, there would be a student who would be starting from number two. For example, Maria is number two. So immediately after one, she would have a rest station. Okay. And then she would have six at SPT. Her exam will end at number one. Do you guys understand? Maria, did you understand? Farheen, did you understand? And this is how I do mock exam as well. I make sure that you have the same drill moving from the same aspect so that you exam looks like a rehearsal to you guys. All right. For example, Farah, you are number four. So Farah starts from here. She is starting from a structured discussion. She would go to fifth after 10 minutes. Then 10 minutes, she will go to SPT. Again, she will go to structure discussion, again, structure discussion, again, structure discussion, again, structure discussion. She started from four. She would have her rest station in the end. So basically, practically, Farah, your, your exam will end on the cubicle number two. You will stay in cubicle number three, but your rest will be in the end. 
Do you guys understand? It is not, oh yes, and then we are going to be free, Farah. What I mean to tell you guys is that there's no fixed pattern. You should be mentally ready. You might start with rest station. You might end at rest station. You might have rest station in between. You might start with SPT. You might start with SD, ending at SPT. SPT might come in the middle because it's a circuit and everybody is moving in one direction. Is this clear? Is this clear? Another important difference, which I have to teach you today is the difference of reading the station. My MRCT part three students, they have different reading time and it's given to them. Please pay an attention here. Pooja, Farah, the ones who are my MRCT part three students as well. In MRCOG part three, we have two minutes reading time plus 10 minutes performing time. All right. Two minutes reading time and 10 minutes performing time. However, Noor, Noor Fatima, in MRCPI OSCE, you have a bell. All of you, there's nothing outside the cubicle. You have a bell. And after the bell rings, you go inside the cubicle. The only station which you have is on your table, please, when you're sitting in front. It is on the table here. Basically, your reading time is part of your 10 minutes performing time. Do you guys understand this point? So I always tell that 20 seconds and 30 seconds do the job and move to the next, right? Do not waste too much time because that is your performing time as well. Yes, no extra time for him. Very well done. You guys understand this, right? Yeah. Now we have so many past topics. If any new station would come, I would write down for you guys that this is a possible station from 2023-2024 guidelines. That's it. Any new station that's coming up, that is going to be from the station which would be, which would be needed for you guys for the exam question, which would be very, very clear to you guys that this is expected because it's a recent guideline. I have my justifications for that and I'll tell you just in a bit. The circuit is very clear and it's very well distributed for the content. You have one labor ward prioritization must, right? Your one station is a procedure station from surgeries. I give you a complete procedure file. Hysterectomy comes, myomectomy comes, laparoscopy, hysteroscopy, cystoscopy. If you do your 10 procedures, one station is done. If you do your labor ward, one station is done. If you do all your breaking bad news, your angry patients, one station is done. If you do your hands-on well, that is, what do I mean by hands-on? Like forceps, like vacuum, like core prolapse, like shoulder dystocia, like PPH drill, your one station is done. So it's very clear that they have divided into sections. You know, setting an angry patient, right? Farah, the, there are obstetric emergencies. I do forceps, I do vacuum with you guys, shoulder dystocia drill, my dear, core prolapse, PPH. Um, these are the recent ones. 2016, we had IUCD insertion in a model, but after 2016, 2017, it did not come up in exam, right? You should be able to do the hands-on with all these obstetric emergencies, your job is done. Maximum, these are coming as a hands-on. Obstetric emergencies are coming or the operative vaginal delivery is coming, right, Farah? 10 stations, which I would tell you in the sessions that this... So I want you guys to be very organized. I want you to divide your preparation in sections. You know, the student who scores higher is always organized. And the student who is failing... It's not that they did not prepare. It's only that they're not understanding the system. I mean, they're not understanding what is expected out of exam. If you, yes, Sabha, go to the highlights. Every single student applying forceps, vacuum, mannequins, shoulder dystocia drill. Everything is there on the table and they do hands-on. You people have not been through the highlights. Did you people see that? Just go to the page. I will share that in your group as well. So everything is there. This is the last moment confidence that you people have, right? 
taking the pap smear, uh, doing a vaginal examination in front of me, seeing that how do you how do you auscultate the fetal heart? All these things are important. Sure, Saba, just after the session, go to your premium group. The highlights are there on the Facebook as well. I'm sure, Farah, you have seen that, right? Yeah, I will share so that you understand that how the practice would be finally. And then we have 2023 and 2024 guidelines. Perfectly, you should be clear about this. You know, 2023 and 2024 guideline, it would be so easy because maximum stations are from there. I told students that subfertility is new and it has changed from our COG. It has changed from the opium board. We have got much changes like letrozole came into action instead of clomiphene citrate. We have started using IUIs and RCPI instead of uh, IVF like we do in MRCOG. Things are different and they would definitely check. Can you imagine that both the exams, first day OHSS came as a long case and second day OHSS came as a circuit. See, when the new guidelines are there, there is no escape. And if you go to the website portal, you've got your all new recommendations in a separate folder. And I purposely placed it in a separate folder so that at least these guidelines are on your tip. And you would see, Farah, you would see that your 80% of exam is from the new recommendations. This is out of last three to four exams, this had been the pattern. And I would make sure that you guys practice, speak them more in the premium group and in the live sessions as well, right? All the active participants, please. I think already two, two more Shweta, um, so many, so many active participants, you people are ready for speaking. This exam is all about speaking. The more you would speak, the more you would learn how to pass this exam. Passing, absolutely, that folder is rescue, Saba. You people should have it on your tips, my love, right? The one who understands the idea about the exam is organized that what do I need to do in each module? You would not fail in this exam. This exam is going to be an easy exam because it's a very good environment, a very comfortable environment, and they make it very smooth, as per response. There can be some, some ups and downs, like few of the examiners, uh, of course, can be a little different, but overall, the environment of the exam is very good and very encouraging. So you should be knowing that the long cases and the OSCE circuit. Now, I'm going to divide the sessions in regular as long case session and the circuit session. We are going to start with the circuit session. When we will start with the circuit session, around 100 plus exam stations I am doing here in the regular course and around 60, 70 in the fast track. And eventually in the mock exam, you people would have the final, the final pet stations coming up with sold keys and that PDF in the end is sufficient to take the exam. But that would be the last polishing because first I will build up your basis and gradually we go filter. I always, I always prefer this funneling technique with you guys. Make a strong basis, narrow down, narrow down, narrow down, and then polish the ones which are 100% coming. But if one or two is off from the top of the funnel, you guys don't lose the score because exam is 90% expected, but of course, 10% are there, which we need um, maybe one odd station or the new station is there. So if you ask me, if you do 2023, 2024, as I told you, one topic which was tested in both the days, if you know how to prioritize your labor ward, I will make you, make you confident in that. If you know the surgical stations, if you know the hands-on, if you know how to talk to the patient, there's no point that you can't make this exam a success. 100% it would be a success. So Farah, the fast track registrations have already started because February is closer and active seats, I only have eight. So um, the fast track, I'm going to start 20th of January live sessions because that would be the end of your regular. However, the registrations are started because the active seats, for listener, not a problem, you people can join in the end, but for active, please join in time because the active fast track seats are very less because you're going to present in the fast track and it's going to be Six, now fast track, how do I do? 
fast track, I do one exam one day. So I do the last five, six exams, right? Yeah, sure, Pooja, please. The link you people can ask in the premium and please tag the website support team. They're going to give you the active fast track link, right? And just be in the group, reserve your seat for that because in the end, listeners, I can take not a problem even during the course, people, they keep on joining for listener, but active is something that you people have to speak for the fast track just to have the last polishing, last 15, 20 days. The more you speak, the better it is, right? Sure, 100% far. I'll take you, Pooja. I'll take you as active. Absolutely for me. So absolutely, my dear. Absolutely for I am waiting for you guys. You are my responsibility as always, my dearest. So we are going to make it the same way as we have done earlier as well, Okay. All right, so Shweta and Iman joining in the waiting room. Let's accept Shweta and here we go. Okay, so for the for the long case, if you're good in your history, if you're good in your examination, see two examinations we have, Upstarting and Gynac. From the start, from the first session, I'm going to make you confident in your examination. Pet points, turning on the right side of the patient, emptying, she, she has an empty bladder, you are being empathetic and sensitive, very tiny points go are there, you know the ethics of examination, the chaperone is with you, these all words, I'm going to give you a pet paragraph, you would learn it and the examiner would be tick, 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 the checklist is done, right, so be confident in all steps of the long case, good history taking, a good examination, making a perfect differential, keeping the topmost on the, on the first priority, very good investigations with justification, making a right diagnosis and a perfect treatment plan. Nobody can stop you from scoring 80% and above if you're that good in your, in your sequence. Let's get started. We are planning the, the February course and along with that, the students who are in the May batch, please, I'm going to take long-term course for the May as well. As soon as the actives are over for the May batch, we will start up with the live session, which would be spaced up for the February course. You all have the active link. Many students are in the active batch already. They're going to present as per, as per the schedule to me. And we would be having those recordings and that would be uploaded. The listeners can interact. They can ask all the questions and they can talk to me for anything. You're my responsibility as well. But the actives would be taking it step by step. Every single day, a tiny progress that adds up to your big results. I'm so very proud of you guys that you people have been with me in written, you people have been with me and now practically meeting you guys, it's a very strong bonding. And somehow it's not only that RFA Lumini is a tutor or it's a mentor-mentee relationship, it is a family and this bonding is somehow emotionally connected. We are here to support Starting up with this introduction today and with this smile that we would aim for each session. My expectation is only one from you guys. Samra, Farheen, everyone out there, I just have one request that the station's puja I have done in circuit, this should be completed before we go to circuit number two. The long case stations, which I've done on 9th, please, they should be completed before I go to 16th. You know why? Because we have got December, January, you would have your New Year celebrations. You would have your lots of birthdays, marriages, family dinners, family time, kids, hospital, everything would be there. But Mariam, the only problem is that I don't want a backlog. Please promise me today that with my teachings, you would go side by side. I would not bombard you with lots of things, but please stay with, with the schedule. You know why? Because if mistakes in circuit number one are not corrected, we will repeat the same one. I always allow for the new mistakes, but I do not permit for the older mistakes because that's my failure. Here, you actually make your mentor face the failure because you're not improving. You people are putting in your finances. You people are putting your energies. You people are paying for the course and every single penny is a burden on me if we don't reach to the success, right? You are sacrificing. Your kids are suffering. You people are giving the family time to this study. Just give me your updated schedule revision. That's it. 
right? You people can do everything, but please don't pend the things. If it would be pending, then backlog would be more. This is a doable exam if you stay with the schedule. This is the only expectation from my side. And today I'm saying it very softly, but you guys know me. Yeah, tomorrow I would say that with a stick with you guys. You know that because we have to reach to a success. And let me tell you guys, right, Shweta? Let me tell you guys, Oman exams have got such a good result. Last time it was 100% result of my Oman OSCE, 42 students, except one UK student who was having vomiting and after the jet lag, she couldn't perform well, she accepts. But other than that, all students, they passed. Oman had wonderful results, guys. But I have very high expectations from you guys, very high expectations. And I know that you have the potential. I know that you all can do it. Yes? Exactly, Farah and Shaista asked her how, how much lack of confidence it had been. I was in the hotel. I would give you like, we'll stay in the same hotel, right? Night before the mock exam, we were sitting on the waiting area in the lobby of the hotel. They kept on practicing in a group, you know? The idea is that till the exam is done, please be focused. Focus to a point that nothing but success should be your aim. And you all can do that. I have only one expectation that please do not miss out. I want every one of you to be very, very active in the, in the study group. Please, absolutely, Sabha. I would, I would see you scoring highest. I know Sabha's potential. I know Pooja's potential. I know Farah, your potential. I know that how much strong you guys are. It's only giving an organized, focused time to your preparation, please. That is my expectation. That's my requirement. 24 seven, you call me anytime that ma'am, I'm stuck up in this, please guide me. I would be there. But the only thing is that you should not miss out the track. It should not be like so many days. There would be days where you would be like leaving few topics and you know, the next day, cover it up, please. It should not be pending tasks from your side. All right, okay. You all have the short cases and the long cases list in your study group. If you do them, they're all the recall stations, recalls um, which had been there. All of them would be in the regular and the fast track. Everything I'm going to cover, after that, none of your station would be left. The stations which are new now in the May exam, the new guidelines, like I told you, I'm covering that as well. Since yesterday, we have started making the new stations to keep the course updated, right? You people would see that all the stations in the regular and the fast track, they will be sufficient. But again, my expectation is that what potential you have, show that to the world and please make it a success, right? Before we go to the, do we have some samples of these stations? Farah, every recording would be uploaded by now. Yes, everything would be uploaded. Okay, now before I do one sample station with you guys, just to give you the idea, this is May 2000, uh, this is November 2024 station, just came in exam on the second day. I just wanted to talk to you guys regarding um, the understanding. Everybody has understood what is the exam pattern. Everyone, please, did you guys understand what is the exam pattern? Yes. Did you guys understand the long case and the circuit? How is the distribution of the long case score? How is the distribution of the circuit score? Yes, everybody clear on this? Okay. Now, did you guys understand that what is the content which we need to prepare and how we are going to follow the premium course? Yes, very well done, Farah. You're amazing. You've always been a fast learner. Yes, very well done, Mariam. Great. Shanti, that's very nice. I'm so proud of you. Very well done. Okay, so now let's do one practice station. That is just to tell you the idea. We are going to do SPD, simulated patient task, but the same station has come as structured discussion as well. I want one volunteer as the, as the candidate and ma'am herself is going to be the role player. Who's going to be here? Pooja. Farah says, Pooja, Pooja, Pooja. Farah, 
Pooja, anybody please. I'm open. I want one volunteer. Let's okay. do a celebration to give a smile and to begin with. Can I have Farah here? Yes? Farah, you're doing? No? Pooja is doing? Who is doing? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'll try, ma'am. Oh, perfect. Can I see camera? Okay, I can see now. That's amazing. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I need a thumbs up for our worthy Pooja, the love who has um, basically volunteered for this one open introductory station. Then we are going to start with the circuits back to back. I'm sure it's going to be a perfect learning. Sorry, Pooja, if I would be a little difficult or prompting, I just want to give the taste of exam. And I'm sure that with this applied clinical knowledge, we would do great. So enter into the cubicle, my dear. Hello, I'm Dr. Pooja. I'm one of the exam candidates and uh, ready for uh, my case. Please, your role player is here. You can start with the history. Thank you. Hello, may I confirm your name and age, please? Hi, I'm Anne. I'm Martin. I am 25 years. How would you like me to address you, Anne? Do you call me Anne? Okay, sure. And um, see, I'm the doctor on duty today and I'm here to take care of you. I can see that you're uh, 26 weeks into your pregnancy and... Uh, there is some uh, problem right now with you. Can you uh, tell me more about your concern? I'm so concerned, please. There's there's a water leak. And what I've gathered is that it's, it shouldn't be at this point. Am I right? Yes, yes. And uh, like, how did it happen? Can you uh, tell me? Is there any pain or any bleeding uh, along with this? I'm, I'm so concerned because um it was it was a clear water and I'm, I'm leaking since morning. I'm so concerned. Is that okay to have water break at this point? Uh, yes, and I can understand your concern. Uh, like it is too early to have the water break right now, but we are here to take care of you and we will do all our best. A team of doctors are here to help you. Uh, and can you tell me more about your pregnancy up till now, how uh, the pregnancy has been? I've been all good. I didn't have any problem at all. I was fine. And I, all my checks, all my blood reports, all my ultrasound have been quite good. I don't know, suddenly okay. I was just lying down and it just like was a gush of fluid. And I got scared. I had to rush to the, to the labor ward. Yeah, I can understand, Anne. Uh, till now, uh, according uh, to your reports, everything had been fine, your investigations, uh, your blood uh, reports and uh, your scan reports had been fine till now? I, nobody told me that anything is wrong. And my midwife had been super happy with the pregnancy so far. Any problem with your urine works, like uh, with your water works, any burning or any pain while passing urine? No. A little, and a little burning in the pee was there. I told my GP, I rang him up and he just told me that I just need to take more water. So I started okay. drinking more water. Okay. And I can see that this is your uh, third pregnancy. Already you have got uh, uh, two uh, pregnancies. Can you tell me more about your uh, pregnancies in the past? So I've got two kids, um, four years and two years. And both of them have been um, a normal birth. And I don't find any problem. It was a very, very good recovery and everything has been quite good. And they're doing great. Okay, that's nice to know. And uh, that time you never had any problems of uh, having uh, this gush of water or no, it was an uneventful pregnancies that time? Absolutely. That had been such a comfortable journey. And how is the support at home? Amazing. My partner loves me so much and he is so supportive. He, he's yeah. so happy. You know what? I've got two girls and this time it's a boy. Yeah. And you have named him? Uh, we are aiming to uh, name him Jack. 
So uh, Jack is moving uh, properly inside. You can feel the movement. A little scared. Probably, I think. I think it's not enough water. I feel that it's less, but I'm not very sure. Maybe I'm apprehensive, and I'm anxious, doctor. Yeah, uh, and I can understand. And uh, uh, do you have any medical concerns or any surgeries has been done for you in the past? I had a cyst removal, but that's nothing to do with pregnancy. It was like I was in my teenage. Okay, and the recovery was fine at uh, that time after your surgery? The recovery was good. Oh, my mom tells me that everything was okay. And any family history of concern? Like? Like? A blood clots or anything in the family? No, doctor. And pardon me, uh, do you smoke, take alcohol and... Uh, regarding recreational drugs i'm a smoker i drink alcohol but i don't do that in the pregnancies and what's your blood group oh that's o positive okay and what's your height to weight ratio around 22 okay i just moved it and uh, any drug allergies i don't have any known allergy a little problem i have with dust but no drugs okay and uh, Doctor. Now I will examine you with the presence of a chaperone. And, okay. Uh, okay. Doctor, uh, I just wanted to know I'm a little concerned about I'm a little concerned about my injections, which the midwife was telling me. Yes, she, yes, uh, sure. I'm coming to that. I, and, I, I, uh, I want to save the baby. Anything for him? Actually, I just want to double uh, excuse me. I just want to double check. Do you have any pain uh, right now? I'm not, I'm not having pain, but there is a discomfort. Yeah. See, uh, now coming to your concern, and uh, we need to uh, keep you in the hospital for observation. We will be uh, giving you some injection for the maturity of the uh, lungs of your baby. Okay. Okay. And uh, then... Uh, in case we find uh, after examining you and after doing your scan and later on, if we find that you are uh, in the process of having a delivery, then uh, we might uh, have to uh, get connected with the NICU team uh, in the hospital. I will just uh, check sorry, with the beds sorry, available. Sorry, come again, doctor. NICU team? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, that is the baby's team will be like, will I I'd have to just uh, double check in the hospital if the cots are available for the baby in case we feel uh, that you're going to deliver before time. You think take baby the baby. By any means, can we stop this water? Can you just put a stitch and can we just stop the fluid leaking? Can we infuse uh, the fluid? I can really understand and what you're going through. But uh, once... Uh, the membrane gets ruptured these uh, this water uh, the start starts then it is like very uh, like it's not advisable to put a stitch because it can lead to uh, infection so we have to just keep you under observation we have to give you some uh, the for the bugs not to uh, enter inside you we might have to give you some injection like antibiotics would you would you be able to save my baby uh, yeah, see, the baby's doctor will come and speak to you and uh, they will tell you more uh, about the baby's uh, prognosis. And just have some water and take this tissues. And we are there to support you. And like many cases have, uh, like uh, after this problem has prolonged, I have done very well also. So what would be the steps to save the baby, please? First is we'll give you some uh, injection. Uh, they are like, all steroids that will help in the lung maturity and we will give you some antibiotics that antibiotic will be uh, given to sorry. you sorry i'm cutting in i came to know that these steroids are not safe and google i just googled it up now so many complications and they even said that there can be some problem with the babies as well in terms of development i mean some mouth problems and all i'm not sure yeah uh, you're absolutely right and but the benefit of the steroid as of now, is like more uh, than the, uh, the side effects which it causes to you, okay? The benefits are like, uh, at present, in your situation, the steroid benefit is uh, much more. The advantage is much more as compared to the side effect it will cause. What benefit? Why do you want to use them? 
it is for the maturity of the lung of the baby and what can be the side effects the side effects can be like that can be transient rise in the uh, sugar level of the mother okay and, for the baby uh, i've heard that it's not good for the baby um right now uh, uh, and uh, like there are the uh, side effects uh, won't be uh, like so much uh, to the baby with the steroid see i don't know why google gives such wrong information doctor see we are here to take care of you and uh, the baby's doctor will be coming my consultant will also come and uh, see you and uh, uh, if you want you can involve your partner also uh, during the meeting yes my husband would like to talk to you he's really anxious yes, sure. from jack yeah yeah um, i wanted to know that from this point onwards what would be done with me would it be some injections would be like what would be done with me we we will need to admit you for 2 to 3 uh, days for observation Okay. and we will be uh, putting some uh, uh injections uh, which will help uh, the uh, bugs not to uh, enter inside your body then uh, the injection which i have told you uh, the steroids will be given and in case we feel that uh, the patient goes into labor and is going to deliver then we give some injection called magnesium uh, sulfate it is mm -hmm. for the brain uh, protection okay my for the no for the baby's brain protection i see so the baby and brain... then we will also give you some uh, uh, like for the uh, uh, like there is some special injection penicillin uh, benzyl uh, penicillin uh, this uh, will be given to you to avoid uh, the bugs uh, to invade doctor how far i can go i mean i just want that the baby is fully developed is it possible? we have seen like uh, some patients they uh, do uh, uh, they do uh, very well they might go up uh, we will try to prolong up till 34 weeks is it possible i yeah, have some cases like if the patient does not go into labor and the we see uh, the status of the patient there is no infection and the pregnancy is had so long after the 10 days course of the antibiotic which i have already told you can i eat drink normally there's no point like there's no 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 yes, yes, you, you will be able to eat drink but only thing is you have to just uh, take rest for few days rest as in like uh, Uh, we will be admitting you in the hospital and once you will get it till the delivery home you uh, it will depend uh, how you will uh, respond to the treatment if how we feel that, that, that uh, if we see that the uh, the like uh, the fluid which is coming out has completely stopped on scan if we find everything is doing good then we might uh, uh, advise you to do some uh, routine uh, work like but we will avoid you to do lot of exercise uh, like I'm a, any... teacher. i'm a teacher i can continue my work uh, if you want we can just get connected uh, uh, we can write a letter uh, for so that you you will be able to take rest and uh, we, we can take care of you and your pregnancy and in terms of my household i can do every work and i'm sorry it's very sensitive but i can continue with the sexual intercourse and everything uh, right now it is like very difficult to say but for few days until and unless we find that the uh, leaking which is happening the water discharge which is happening has completely stopped we will advise you not to uh, just to uh, take rest come uh, to uh, have a good uh, rest right now then later on we will come and speak to you regarding your routine activities uh, which you can be able to do please save my baby doctor sure we will try our best and uh, i will give you the patient information leaflet and my consultant is also coming to see you and the baby's doctor will also come and speak to you and uh, right now i'll just take the availability of the bed for the baby also In thank you so it, uh, much thank you so much i'm so grateful for this it was it was a big big thing to maintain the uh, complete 10 minutes for this and that too a big round of applause hi rosina i was missing you girl walikum assalam wa rahmatullah thank you so much
A big round of applause for this lady who is amazing in her applied clinical knowledge, despite me doing so many prompts and giving so many difficulties to her and just digging all the guideline, the Irish guideline from her. She was amazing. Pooja, I always love your content speaking. I always love your confidence. I know there were certain points where we were just missing out the information. Uh, uh, side effect of steroid on baby, I was uh, like, mad. <laughs> and you know, when you were looking at, um, mm, why <laughs> mad? Again and again, ma'am, I'm not remembering that, but I was like, no, girl, I've caught you here. I will not yes, spare you. I got no, like very nervous when you told me side effect on the baby about steroid. I so. know. And there have been absolutely, when you were saying that then there were certain bugs we need to prevent and, you know, then you didn't forget the GBS. I was so happy on this. Very well done. I am so glad that we managed this beautifully. And it was an amazing one as compared to, um, as compared to what we know, especially Rosina. Hi, good to see you, my dearest. Thank you very much for joining all right, can I have all the cameras here? Let's have an interaction for one sample station, which we did, and what is expected out of all this. Hi, May. Hello, Saba. Thank you very much. Hi, Bibi Mehnaz. How are you? All right, everybody, please pay attention here. Farah, Hibbert, Lavania, my dear Manahil, Maria, Najla, Noha. So good to see all the Sunanis here as well. Thank you very much, Shanti. How are you doing? So good to see you, my love. All right, so what do I expect from you? All of you, please, it was just randomly picked up. Pooja didn't know that she's preparing. She didn't know the yes, talk. So when I am analyzing her as like a sudden surprise and then speaking up with whatever is baseline, whatever she spoke was not prepared. It was her baseline, right, Saba? You understand? So what she was doing was like just her baseline at the situation, which was not something where we are having a concern with regards to like, you know, that she was prepared and she did the station. Now with this, I am so happy with so many points which were amazing with this. And that was related to her introduction, the way she has checked the name and the age. I was very happy with the content which she was speaking with regards to, with regards to the applied clinical knowledge. I'll go step by step and I will write down here for you guys so that you guys understand the points which were really, really good for her. I was very happy with her communication with the patient, the way she has taken up the name, the way she was taking up the age details. And I was very happy when she spoke up all the information gathering regarding how did she come, her pregnancy details, everything had been fine. And she noticed that this is a patient who is 26 weeks pregnant. And she said that, I know that you have got two kids. She did the past obstetric history, the PPROM history earlier as well. That all was checked by her. That was very, very nice. Communicated with the name of Jack. That was, again, a very good thing. And that was something which, which I appreciate because that was a very good communication with the patient. Um, she asked the blood group and BMI as well, which generally students, they miss out. I was extremely happy with this patient's safety, which was done. And I appreciate, Pooja, all the coaching of part three you have not missed out. And I'm very proud of you on this. She did examination. She checked it. She told about the most important applied clinical knowledge, which was steroid, which was magnesium sulfate, which was GBS. She didn't even miss the GBS. And I was happy that she did speak about erythromycin as well as an antibiotic, right? So this was the basic applied clinical knowledge. And she was very clear about the indications of the same, right? Very well done. No problem for me. Listen to the recording, my dear. A very good introduction. A very, very good applied clinical knowledge before that, the purpose, the agenda. Asking about the pregnancy, about all the details she mentioned in one sequence. She didn't even skip the UTI. That was very nice. My only concern was that we didn't check out on one thing on patient safety, which was the choreo signs. Totally missed. Running Evo. fever was one thing which I was waiting for because that is the patient safety. And if you have not asked in the history, at least in the management, tell that we are going to see if at all you run fever. Remember, I was asking how far you would take me. So you have to tell the choreo and unite the signs. If okay. you, you understand, Pooja, if yes, at all, exactly, Samra, my dear, if at all you would start running fever, 
or there would be foul smelling discharge, there would be a tummy pain, you feel unwell, or the blood reports which we do in your monitoring, they are showing infection. I'm afraid that we'll have to deliver Jack as early as possible. Mm -hmm. This line was the only missing line, which as an examiner, I just wanted to have. Otherwise, it was amazing, right? I would avoid that one word where you said nice to know. What was that thing where you said nice to know? I think on my stopping alcohol and smoking, correct? And uh, I think like for uh, your previous pregnancies had been good now. So it yes. was, I, I would not say any cheerful sentence in a pregnancy, which is at the moment in complication. Yes, okay, I would avoid that. HOPI was missing as a point that leaking time, fever, color, and any sort of uh, other concern like, for example, she had any trauma, any fall, all these things, one one question could have been could have been better, but most important thing was fever, which I was expecting, right? Once in the station, you have cut the role player. And then you said, excuse me. Do you remember that point? Yeah. So yeah. if in exam you cut the role player, yeah. your communication with the patient gets affected. So what do you say? Yeah. For example. We are humans and there can be a time when you're speaking and the role player is also speaking and you start speaking uh, directly, like, you know, together. So what do you say in that? I'm sorry, please go ahead. Yes, please. I'm listening to you. Immediately stop your sentence there. Do not take the step further until unless she has completed her sentence. I would say that so many times. Do not cut the role player. Okay. The moment you cut the role player, communication with the patient has a dip in your score. Okay, all right. So what do we say in that situation? If at all it has happened that you have started communicating together or she is speaking and you're speaking as well, you bend forward, stop your sentence there and you say, yes, please. All okay. right, you say, yes, exactly. Some Ravi say, yes, please, I'm listening to you. Please continue and stop your sentence there and bend forward like, you know, you're all ears towards her. All right. Okay. Rest of the history was okay. Niku was a jargon. They don't know. We are going to have the baby doctor, uh, the cot availability check. Okay. Niku was a jargon I've written. In monitoring nice. also, when you were doing, I was asking, what would you do? The fever check, the pulse check, regular te temperature check for you. And we are going to assess further that how is the color of the lyca. And you're going to send your bl blood investigations to see that how the things are. That was again. Yes. Okay. And then the red flag signs, you have to tell her three days, 72 hours. The Irish guideline says that we are going to have 72 hours admission and then we can discharge provided all the vitals and the observations are fine. This is what I wanted to hear. But there is a chance that she starts labor. I asked you specifically about sexual intercourse and you said, okay. So the answer is no. Anything okay. like a vaginal examination or anything which can trigger so that should be avoided, right? So you have to tell her, counsel her that no aggressive activity or avoid the sexual intercourse. Always be sensitive while talking about the sex matters because it is a sensitive thing and make her comfortable while saying that, right? Um, how is the response of the baby? It depends upon the weight of the baby. It depends upon how far the maturity has been reached. Please uh, know the side effects of the corticosteroids, which I'm going to show you now. You have to tell. So you start up with this. She was Anne, right? Okay. So you have Anne. to do history. I'll do the station with you guys, right? So I'll do one station so that it stays in the recording and you guys understand that how the speaking would be in that situation. Hello, I'm Dr. Pooja. I'm one of the doctors in the in the labor ward today. Am I talking to Miss Anne Martin? Yeah, may I confirm your age, please? Is it okay? I'll call you Anne. I've gathered from your case notes and the midwife has informed me that you're here today because um, you had your waters breaking and you're here because you are um, concerned about the injections and the treatment plan. Am I right? Yes. Can I ask a few questions quickly? How are you doing at the moment? Do you have any pain? No. All right. Just a few questions to know you better and then we can uh, have the mutually agreed management plan. Is that okay for you? All right. Can I know the details of the situation at the moment? When did this happen, actually? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So the water is clear in color. Yes. Are you having any tummy pain with that? Any bleeding at all? 
No. Did you feel that there's any contraction, any discomfort? No. Any running fever? No. Did it happen spontaneously or was it any activity, any trauma, any hurt? I'm sorry to ask this question. Just want to be sure if there's any reason behind that. Okay. Before this happened, were you experiencing any vaginal discharge? Any foul smelling discharge? No. Any problem with your waterworks at all? No. Any burning in pee? I see. Did you take any medications for that? I will document that and we'll send some investigations if needed. We'll start the medications. Is that okay, Anne? Yeah. So from the start of the pregnancy, any concerns? Did you take your polic acid? How were your blood investigations? How were the ultrasound? How, do, how was the baby doing in all the previous scans, the mid-pregnancy scan, head to toe? That happened okay? Yeah. Did you name the baby? It's Jack, all right. So may I know that how, how do you find the movements? Are they okay? All right. I would like to have a little information regarding your previous two births. How were they and how was the experience and how are your kids doing now? I see. So they're both girls, right? May I know the ages and was it a normal birth? I see. Okay. So any problem earlier in terms of any medication you're taking with your GP, any medical concern, any family history of concern, any surgeries on the tummy or down below, any medications you're taking at the moment? No. All right. May I double check your BMI and your blood group, please? I see. I'll document that. That's fine. And um, do you have any reservations for the transfusion if needed any time in your management? No. If I could check that you smoke or do you drink alcohol? You're not doing that at the moment. That, that's fine. Any recreational drugs at all? No. How do you feel generally and um, how's your support at home? May I confirm your occupation? What do you do to live? You're a teacher. All right. We provide you with a sick note as well. Thank you very much, Anne, for all this information. Anything important you would like to add or you think that can be useful information for me? All right, thank you very much. I would like to examine you the Prince of a Chaperon. Um, I would just do um, an examination, which is in the form of a spaculum, which we insert, which you have generally in your pap smears. Do you understand that? Yeah. So because you're not having contractions at the moment, I would not like to have an internal examination. However, if any time, if you have contractions, then we would see if there's any need for internal examination. Is that okay for you? Yeah. I have your observations as well. So because you're not running fever at the moment, but we would keep on checking that during your admission. Is that fine for you? Yes. Now, because the water is leaking, there are certain concerns which we have, which I'm going to talk to you about. Do you want your partner to be with you? Is it okay that I continue, Anne? Yeah. So, Anne, we are going to send some investigations. These investigations are to check that your state is fine with the leaking. We are going to check your urine, if there's any infection down there. The blood count to see that if there's any infection in the blood or there's some other measures to check the infection. And for that is an indicator that uh, you are doing well and we can continue this pregnancy as far as we can. Is that okay for you? Yes. I wanted to tell you that for the patients who have the water leak earlier than the due date, we call it as premature rupture of the membranes. Yes, the baby is smaller and I can understand your concern at the moment. There is a chance that because of this water leak, it becomes a trigger and the womb starts contracting. And because of this water leak, the patient has a chance to go into early labor as well. There is a chance that because of, because of the water leak, patients, they start running fever and there is an infection for which we are going to observe. But their, their chance of having an early birth because of these complications are higher. Are you following me so far? Yes. If we would feel that the infection is there, it's always better to deliver the baby as early as possible rather than taking the pregnancy further. Are you with me on this? If we see that the labor is not initiating, then the risk of cesarean section would also be there. Is that okay for you? Yeah. Now we have to take certain steps to help the baby to get into maturity as early as possible. We have an injection steroid this is given to the baby to have the lung maturity so that the breathing complications are not there. 
if it is not given, the chances of having the baby breathing difficulties, the complications of early birth with the gut, with the bleed in the brain, that all are higher. And unfortunately, the death during the labor or after the birth of the baby is also higher in case in case the complications are not dealt with in time. Are you following me? I know this is a lot of information and I can understand as a mother of your emotions at the moment. Do you need a glass of water? Do you want me to continue or do you want to take a little time? I can get back to you in a little while. You want me to explain you further, yeah? I would just like to reassure that we as a team of doctors, me, my consultant, the anesthesia doctor if needed, the baby doctor would also be here to chat, to tell you the details and the possible possible consequences with the, with the steps which you're going to take to save the baby. Is that okay? Can I continue? Thank you very much. So the team of doctors will take care of this pregnancy. Today, we are admitting you for observation. Around 72 hours, we would see and observe that everything goes fine in terms of your um, in terms of your temperature, in terms of the heart rate as well, yeah? We will give the steroid now and we are going to repeat the second dose in 12 to 24 hours. We will give medication to prevent infection. We call it as erythromycin. If at all we expect that the delivery is happening in 12 to 24 hours, we would give an injection called magnesium sulfate, which is for the brain protection of the baby. Is that okay for you? Any time... If the womb starts contracting, we are afraid that we'll have to deliver the baby. Is that okay for you, right? I can understand that you're scared of steroids and I know that you have read a lot about these steroids. I would just like to tell you that generally the steroids, they are to prevent the complications for the breathing for the baby. However, it, it has certain side effects like any medication. It prevents at first place the baby admissions to the baby doctor or it, it prevents the death of the baby if at all the baby maturity is achieved because of these. It also prevents other complications with the gut and the brain as well. However, if repeated injections are given, there is a chance that the baby might not grow properly. There will be small size baby or the development of the baby might not be proper. However, this is generally when the baby is not having the um, not having one dose enough and we have to repeat the dose for the baby. Is that okay for you? There is a chance that the baby glucose levels are reduced, but again, these complications are with the repeated injections for the, for the baby. Is that okay? Yeah? Now with this, you're going to tell the benefits and the risks, right? And then you're going to move further with, with the management plan. Address the concerns and make sure that you continue to give the negotiating points. Here, Pooja, we needed improvement. I mean, in the disadvantages, right? Yeah? Yes, okay, thank you very much. I'm here for the questions. Give me one second, guys. The backend team is messaging. Just give me one second.
All right, my voice is audible to all of you. Yes, Shweta, it was the backing team was just settling up. Yes, no, did you guys understand, right? So Pooja, did you understand what was my expectation? There were so only tiny points which were missing. Otherwise, you were amazing. Did you guys see my flow? Did you guys see that how I was talking to the patient, how I was checking understanding, how there were ups and downs in the tone? And with this, completing the entire station with good negotiating, it would do the job. This slide goes for lovely Pooja with the benefits and the risks so that she does not forget. And I'm sure with this, it would sit in your in your neurons because it's a recent November yes, 2024 station. When I was preparing this station yesterday, I was talking to the candidates who had this. For each station in my, in my course, first you will do that then I will do that and you will have its recording so that you can, you can listen to me and you start adapting. And at the end of the course, I see students, oh my God, this is ma'am speaking. <laughs> I can see my reflection in you guys. I can see that the templates which I give, you start speaking in a way which, you know, the concerns addressing, the way you people should be negotiating, the choice of words, the up and down in the voice, the structured discussion, Slides and the content would be sufficient, but then you need to practice the way I actually want you to do that. Any question, please. Thank you very much for liking it, my dear. Thank you very much, Farah. So, um, Farah, all the stations are not breaking bad news, but this time in November, we got Edwards, which was a repeat, repeat station. It came in Riyadh as well earlier. In Riyadh exam, Edward was there. This time again, Edward came. So, see, there's only one simulated patient task, everybody, right? The honey, there's only one simulated patient task. Because it's one simulated patient task, it, it can't be very smooth or a simple, straightforward. In MRCOG, things are different. In MRCOG, we have got 10 simulated patient tasks. Here, we've got one. So it's one, either it's a breaking bad news, right? But are you there? Or if it's not a breaking bad news, then it's an irritated, angry patient, right? Or it is somewhere where the communication is going to be a little challenge because there's only one. That's the reason, okay? So if you do the templates that are given, they're absolutely sufficient for your preparation and there is no, no shortcut. Even if you read the template communication, you need to learn speaking with, a, with an examiner is an art, not highlighting your mistakes and masking your mistakes. We have to learn this and I'm sure that you guys would do great. So the pattern of the stations would be first following, then doing the feedback, doing the same station by myself, and then having the template on your portal so that you can read all the theory related to that. And this would be the way of preparation of around 150 exam tested stations and long cases. Thank you so much. Any questions are there regarding the station? Any question? Sabah Khalid says, Mem, only ebook and sessions are enough. We'll go through the whole Irish guideline again. Summary is enough, Sabah. Sabah, summary is enough, my dear. All right? Pooja, thank you very much, Pooja. You are part of me and I can see you progressing. Today, it was such an unexpected one and I'm so happy because your 80% of the station was very, very right and in the, in, in the correct direction. Very proud of you. Thank you very much, Radha. Saba, thank you very much. All right, are you guys all set? Did you guys understand that how the pattern would be? Did you guys see the dates? Yes, I put in the dates, please, for you guys. Lots of messages for the OSCE, please. All those who already are in the premium group, you're part of me, the ones who are joining in because the students for the uh, September 2024 and March 2024, the ones written students who are yet to join, we are right here. As soon as you join the group, please make sure that you guys are in the premium batches. We have got an active batch, we've got a listener batch, and then there's a telegram where the feedback's being given. The more you speak, the better it would be. Session time, ma'am, please. What are you comfortable with, Manahil? We'll do a poll, whatever comfortable time you would see. We'll put two timings, and I'm going to be there with you guys on that time. Yes? Samra, 2 p.m. GMT? Everybody, Rosina, 2 p.m. GMT, my love. 
Yes, ma'am. Okay, for me it's okay. Thank you, ma'am. How's everything? I was. Oh, thank you very much. So good to see you, my dearest. Thank you very much. I was waiting for you. I'm so glad that you joined in, and everything is fine. Stay in touch, my dear. Let's get back to speaking, speaking. Yes, and you're already yes. in the mock group, right? You're already in the Oman mock group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm just waiting for the tight hug from Rosina. Long yeah. awaited. Yes. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so, much, my dear. Sun is okay. Everything is okay. Yeah. Everything That's is. great. Thank you very much. Yes. See you, my dear. Soon. You're getting seed this time, Rosina. Inshallah. Inshallah. Actually, um, ma'am, hmm? I died. Flight. Otherwise, I will be uh, with you to uh, is active. But actually, I was in uh, flight yesterday night. I reached in the later. Oh, no problem at all. You are part of me. No problem at all. Pooja is there to volunteer always. Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'm also much. looking forward to meet you, ma'am. In Oman. Really? I'll send you mine and Samantha's, you know, selfies. Oh, we enjoyed so much. And I was like, oh, Pooja is missing here. Definitely will send you mine. <laughs> Sabah says, ma'am, irrelevant question, but can we manage January MRCG 2, Jan 25 with the OSCE prep? Sabah, it is a little difficult because both the preparations are quite different and don't take MRCG 2 easy. Ask Pooja. Do not take yes. MRCG part too easy. <laughs> that, that requires full 10 hours, Sabah. But Sabah, I know your capabilities also. You are my one student who even being admitted can score highest and top. But um, then again, I'll discuss with you, my dear. Okay. Because we do have pros and cons. MRCG part two, ask Farah. We need to sacrifice a lot. Oski is a little yes. different. Okay. Any concession on the active fast track? No. Unfortunately, I've got only eight seats. But um, I'll just get connected to you after the session. Okay. Just seeing that how many subscriptions can be there. Huge responsibilities on ma'am's tiny shoulders. So um, I'll I'll get connected to you, okay? Samra, me too. Okay, sure. Farah, Zakaria got hurt, so I missed the last part. Please tell Zakaria that ma'am is strictly saying now a very good boy he would be and take care of mummy. And I'll talk to him to tell him that we need till February his cooperation. Yes, Samra, lots of hugs for you. You're part of me, my dear. Yes, yes, yes. I told Farah that all SPTs are not BBN, but there can be some difficult, challenging communications because that's the only station we are having in communication. All right. Yes, absolutely, Noor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any questions? Any comments? So we're meeting for the circuit. I'm going to come to the premium group just in a bit. Yes, my dear, please. Um, yeah, ma'am, in structured discussion, we are speaking to the examiner. Okay. So. Uh, like we will be uh, using like all jargons or uh... always jargons. The more you speak the medical language, the better score you get when you're talking to the examiner. Ask Rosina. Yes. Yeah. So when doing the SPT, we start talking and I'll tell you one example, you know, students doing the hysterectomy and putting the clamps on the uh, on the hysterectomy and they're saying, we are going to turn the womb here, turn the womb there and turn the womb. And I was like, why womb? Because, you know, they try to practice SPT so much that uterus in front of the examiner also becomes a womb. So this is, this is, you need to understand the choice of words. The choice of words have to be, have to be medical terms in front of the examiner yes. and have to be uh, stimulated, uh, simple task uh, language when it is a patient, right? A role player. Okay. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Like example, uh, because one I had sent uh, one of my voice note in that I was speaking to the examiner. So I said, I will ask my patient to uh, like for the, I use the word abdomen. So uh, I was told to uh, say tummy. No, but if you're talking to the patient, if examiner yes, said, please counsel your patient, then even yes. if examiner, then you would say tummy. Why? Because examiner is giving you a task that how would yes. you communicate to the patient? In that case, you would say, I would say this to my patient. So they know that you're the terms you're using is the patient. Yes. But if examiner is asking you, how would you perform the examination? Then of course it would be abdomen. Yes. yes. Got, Got it. it so see yes. the, see the question and then accordingly yes. answer. All right. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yes, it was a very good session, ma'am. You so a lot. <laughs> Always you guys are part of me. And I, I, when I talk to you guys, it feels that it's like from inside the, the, you know, the, the enthusiasm is coming, seeing you guys successful, seeing you guys reaching at this point is a big success. And we are just waiting for that convocation that things are over. 
I know yeah. all of you in different parts, you people are sacrificing. Everybody is giving in hard work, putting in efforts. But at the end of the day, when we get the results, we just have a smile remembering these moments, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I'm sure we'll make it a success. Thank you so much. So Thank all you, of you take very good care of yourself, Pooja, Hira, Noor, Samra, Farah, my dear, Hibbert. So good to see you, Hibbert Allah. Khan, Lavania, Mehnaz, May, Manahil, Maria, Najla, Noha, Pooja, Saba, everybody, Samra, Shanti, Shraddha, Shweta, Tahani, my dear, Yasmin, all of you are part of me. We are going to make it a success, please. Nothing is easy. We have to make it easy for ourselves and a very focused preparation. Let's make it a success like your colleagues and let's put our 100% so that we don't have any regrets and I'm sure the success would be ours. Thank you so much. I love you all. Take very good care of yourself. See you guys with the circuit preparation. The moderator is going to give you the topics for the circuit. I want perfect presentations. Try to attend the live session so we learn together. If not, then definitely the recording would be uploaded on your portal. All those who are messaging on my WhatsApp regarding the bookings, please, the February listener and the actives, they are there. You people can join in and I'm all happy to coach you guys for the February 2025 and May 2025. Let's pray that this journey is full of blessings, togetherness, the bond we share, and let's make it a success together. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Take very good care. Thank you very much. And best of luck from the entire team of RFA theaters. Proud of you guys. Let's join hands to make this journey a successful, a memorable one. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Take good care. Love to you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.